Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L and M Filters. This is it. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. <laughs> There's a couple of chairs, Matt. Let's sit down and watch the plaza for a while. Okay, Doc. You'd look better sitting than standing anyway. Well, I'd feel better, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. An attack of the egg you always leaves a man weak, Matt. Uh, you got over yours darn fast. Well, I still feel kind of raveled out, Doc. Stupid and mad at the same time. Oh, well, egg you doesn't improve a man's temper. Oh, I haven't had a good night's sleep in a week, I'll bet. Marshal Dillon? Uh, yeah. Uh, Marshal, you don't know me, but I've seen you around lots of times. My name's Jake Bewley. I've seen him, too. Hello, Doc. You know. No, what can I do for you, Bewley? I heard you was in the market for a good horse, Marshal. Yeah, I'm always in the market for a good horse. Well, that's what I do, Marshal. Right around the country looking for extra good horses. I don't make much profit off them, but keeps me from working steady. And I don't buy horses very often, Bewley, and even good ones. You like buckskins? Sure. But uh, I don't want to look at him tonight. Tomorrow? Well, yeah, yeah, if I'm feeling better. So you know, Matt, uh, what would do you good? Oh, what, Doc? Go over to the Long Branch and take a couple of shots of whiskey. No. Uh-huh. And then go to bed. <laughs> okay, Doc. I'll just do that. You, uh, you want to come along? No, no. i got some work to do at my office. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night, Beauty. Good night, Doc. Good night, Doc. Uh, how long you been on Dodge, Beauty? Hmm? A couple of months. No. You, uh, make a pretty good living trading horses? I done good so far. Without cheating nobody too bad, either. Marshall! Marshal Dillon! I don't know. What does he want? Who is he? Uh, Sam Noonan. Oh, yeah. Don't he work at the Long Branch? He built it. Oh, what do you want, Sam? Hurry up, Marshal. Oh, what's the trouble? Out back. Gonna be a fight. A fight? Who? <laughs> you know that gambler, Charlie Pickard? He's also kind of a gunman, isn't he? He's roaring drunk, Marshal, and there's gonna be trouble, sure. Now, come on, we'll go up the alley. That Pickard's always getting in trouble. Who's he after, Sam? Chester, that's who. Chester? Yeah. It started right inside at the bar, Marshal. Chester bought a drink for that little blonde girl. Well, doctor. it doesn't matter now. You can tell me later. There they are. I didn't bring you out here for talk, Chester. Now everybody get back. Ah, you're drunk, Pickard. I ain't so drunk I can't shoot you. Pickard. Marshal Dillon. Don't touch the gun, Pickard. What are you doing here, Marshal? I'm stopping a fight. I ain't gonna fight you. All right, then give me your gun. Take it. I ain't that drunk. Chester. Yes, sir. Throw him in jail. Now, wait, Marshal. Shut up. Take him around the other way, Chester, out the next alley. I'm going inside for a minute. Then I'll be over. There ain't gonna be no fight. I think I'll go to bed. 
I'll be around with that buckskin in the morning, Marsh. Yeah, sure. Sure, Buick. It ain't fair to put me in jail, Marshal. I ain't done nothing. You're drunk and you were about to shoot a man, Pickett. I'm doing you a favor throwing you in jail. That's true, Pickett. All right. Put me in jail. But wait till I get sober, Chester. Wait till tomorrow. Oh. I'll get you. You'll see what I'll do. You're not going to do anything, Pickett. All right, take him along, Chester. I'll follow you, Pickett. Go ahead. Walk slow. It won't be so easy next time. Marshals. What are they going to have marshals around for? Oh, you'll forget it by morning. No, I won't. You'll see, Chester. All right, Sam, tell me now. What's this all about? Well, I started to tell you, Marshal. Chester bought a drink for Nita Tucker at the bar in there. You know her. Yeah, I've seen her around. Well, she's really Pickard's girl. He kind of watches out for her, you know? Yeah. Well, she don't seem to like it much, but that don't stop him. And he's real jealous if anybody gets anywhere near her, especially if he's been drinking, like tonight. So he was going to shoot Chester because he bought Nita a drink, huh? Yeah. Well, that's a great reason for killing a man. Oh, that Pickard can be awful mean, Marshal. It wouldn't surprise me a bit if he makes more trouble tomorrow when he's sober. And I'll keep him in jail till he forgets about it. Can't keep him there forever. No, but I can always run. Come from that alley there. Yeah, come on. Must be Chester. Hey, look at Marshal. That's Pickard. Chester shot him. What's the matter with you, Chester? Did he knife you or something? Here, come on. Stand up. Come on. Dead, Marshal. Are you hurt, Chester? What happened? Right. Come on, tell me what happened. I got hit. And here's Chester's gun, Marshal. He's laying right to his feet. Did he jump you? Is that what happened? No. No, he didn't jump me. Well, then why did you shoot him? I didn't shoot him. Somebody hit me. Well, that don't make sense. Of course you shot him. This here's your gun. It's been fired. I didn't shoot him. Somebody jumped out from back of that rain barrel and hit me. Eh? Yeah. You ain't bleeding nowhere. Well, he hit me back here, behind my ear. Didn't knock me out for long. I heard the gunshot, but I couldn't do nothing. Who was it, Chester? I didn't see him. I started to turn, and then he hit me. You're going to have a hard time proving that, Chester. I didn't kill him, Sam. He swore he was going to get you tomorrow. And looks to me like you killed him for that. I got hit, I tell you. You believe me, don't you, Mr. Dillon? Sure, sure, Chester. But Sam's right. It's going to be hard to prove. You're not even marked up. Uh, well, let Doc look at it. He can tell I got hit. Well, I wouldn't kill nobody like that. Sam, get somebody to take care of Pickard's body, will you? We're going over to Doc's. <laughs> Hold that lamp a little higher, Matt. I can't see. Yeah, is that better, Doc? That's fine. That's fine. Now then, show me where you were hit, Chester. Right there, Doc. Right, right back of the ear. Right here. Oh, well. What did he hit you with? Well, how do I know? I didn't see him. Well, maybe he used the edge of his hand. It isn't swollen. The skin isn't broken anywhere. Well, it's bruised, ain't it? Well, not that I can see. Well, it must have done something. How hard were you hit, Chester? Well, it knocked me off my feet. And I got kindly fainty for a few seconds. Long enough for him to take my gun and shoot Charlie Pickard. That's pretty hard, ain't it? Mm, yeah. You can put the lamp down there, man. Okay, Doc. You're... You're saying you can't testify I got hit, ain't you, Doc? You want me to lie for you, Chester? No, I... No, I wouldn't ask you to do that, Doc. It's too bad Sam Noonan had to be there, isn't it, Matt? Oh, Sam likes Chester, but he thinks he did it, and he'll testify against it. Well, how can he, Mr. Dillon? He didn't see it. No, nobody saw it. Well, then they can't hang me, can they? Well, they can't hang you, Chester. But 
prison, huh? Maybe for life. I uh, will find out who did it. Oh, well, there's no way in the world to find oh, out. Now, wait a minute, Chester. You're giving up too easy. Tell me. You, you and Doc, you... You don't really think I'd done that, do you? You're in a bad spot, Chester, real bad, but I believe you. What about you, Doc? Oh, of course I believe you, Chester. Thanks, Doc. And you too, Mr. Dillon. I, I'd feel awful if you didn't believe me. Well, worrying about it won't help, Chester. Well, i got to worry about it. If we don't find out who done it, I'll have to stand trial. And I won't have a chance if I do. Are you... Are you going to put me in jail, Mr. Dillon? No, of course not. But uh, you'd uh, better stay around the office, though, huh? There's going to be enough talk about it as it is. All right, sir. Uh, what was the girl's name? Nita Tucker? Yes, sir, that's right. But why? Well, maybe she knows who wanted Charlie Pickard dead. I'll be back later. <laughs> Sam. Well, what did Doc find? Nothing visible. Yeah. You put Chester in jail? Uh, I'll have a shot of whiskey, Sam. Now, uh, look, you marshal. I'm as sorry about this as anybody. But just because Chester works for you, there's no reason he can murder a man and then go free. I'll be responsible for Chester. If he gets away, it'll make a lot of trouble, Marshal. You think Chester did it, don't you? Of course I do. And I don't like him not being in jail. Uh, Sam, that's uh, Nita Tucker sitting over there with Kitty, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's her. But she didn't do it. Oh? Well, she hated Pickard, but you're not going to try to hang this on her, Marshal. No, sir. I'll stand up for her. She's a good girl. I got the drink, Sam. I don't need it. Hello, Matt. Evening, Kitty. Uh, you know Nita Tucker, Matt? No. Uh, how do you do? Marshal, sit down. Oh, thank you. Uh, I, I'm sorry about Charlie Pickard, Nita. Mm. Sounds terrible, Marshal, but I'm not very sorry. I hated him. Uh, Charlie didn't treat women very good, Matt. Well, that wouldn't excuse murdering him, though. Uh, I'm not so sure. Marshal, you're not thinking I had anything to do with it, are you? Now, Chester says he didn't do it, and I believe him. I wouldn't kill anybody, even him. Where were you when it happened? I was in here. She was at the bar, Matt. And I was standing right next to her. Okay. I guess that clears you, Nita. Uh, tell me, who else hated Pickard? A man like him has enemies, Marshal. There must be a lot of them. Anybody in particular? Mm, not that I know of. Look, I'd like to help Marshal. If Chester didn't do it, it isn't right. He should be in jail. No, it sure isn't. Uh, it looks bad for Chester, don't it, Matt? Yeah, Kitty, it does. Oh, good night. Good night, Edith. Good night, Marshall. Matt. Chester, Marshal. I'm awful sorry about it. Oh? Huh? He's always seemed like such a nice fella. Sure is too bad. Yeah, yeah. People are going to wonder why you don't lock him up. No, they are. Well, not me. I understand, but Sam Noonan was saying something about it inside there a minute ago. I see. Well, that's what I wanted to tell you. He's going to make trouble about it. I told him not to be a fool. Ah, uh, just a minute, Billy. Well, what do you care? Is Chester a good friend of yours? Well, no, I don't know him very well, but I don't like to see no trouble start. Well, if it does, I'll handle it. I know you will, Marshal. I just wanted to tell you what the talk is. I'll bring that buckskin by in the morning, huh? Okay. 
Good night, Bueller. Good night, Marshal. Jack Bewley's warning didn't bother me much. But still, I couldn't delay filing murder charges against Chester forever. And after ten days of useless search for the real killer, I had to do it. And then having written him up, I really began to worry. Chester did too. He'd sit quietly in the office and look at me as though I'd just kicked him. So I stayed out of there as much as possible. Like today, I went into Mr. Jonas' general store for nothing but to kill a little time looking around. Matt! Hey, Matt, come here. Wow. Hello, Kitty. Nita. Hello, Marshal. Well, are you girls going to buy that whole pile of dresses you got stacked up there? <laughs> as soon as Mr. Jonas gets back here, we are, Marshal. She means she is. I'm only watching, Matt. Well, isn't that a lot of clothes for just one woman? <laughs> Not for me. Not this time. Uh, not this time? Matt, when does a girl buy everything new? All she wants. <laughs> well, I don't know, I'm sure. When she gets married, of course. Married? Uh, you getting married, Nita? Next Saturday, Marsh. Well, uh, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, do I know the groom? Jake Bewley. Jake Bewley. I guess everybody's surprised. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Would you come to the wedding, Marshal? I wish you would. Well, sure, sure. Really? Of course, I, I'd like to come, Nita. Good. <gasps> Look, Kitty, I huh? didn't see those hats back there. <laughs> well, I'm not going to leave this store till I've looked at every single thing in it. Um, Kitty. She's so excited. Kitty, <laughs> listen to me. Huh? How long has this been going on between her and Bewley? A month or so, I guess. Why? I thought she was Charlie Pickard's girl. <laughs> Pickard thought she was, too. But she and Bewley used to meet on the sly. He never did find out. And he sure can't stop him now. No, he can't. As bad as it is for Chester, I'm glad Charlie Pickard got shot. Well, there are other ways it could have been handled. Kitty, I'm going to tell you a secret. A secret? Well, that's what I want you to call it when you tell it to Nita. Tell Nita what? And I'm going to let Chester leave Dodge tonight. What? I'm going to ride out of town with him, and as soon as he's gone, I'm coming back and arrest Bewley. Bewley? You think he did it, Matt? Well, he could have. He had a good reason to. I'm going to find out for sure tonight. Anyway, tell Nita that I have a witness. A witness that nobody knows about but me. But, Matt, if... Bewley believes that. Won't he wonder why you're letting Chester run away? Oh, not if he hears my witness won't be back in Dodge for a couple of days. And that I'm afraid Sam Noonan will form a lynch mob before then. All right. But you're asking a lot, Matt. Why tell him Nita this could ruin her one chance to be happy. Now, she wouldn't be happy with a murderer, Kitty. And if Bewley's innocent, I promise you that nothing will happen to him. Okay, Matt. I'll do it. All right, good. Uh, Chester will be riding out of Moss Grimmick stable about midnight tonight. With me. longer. No. Not I was hoping he'd come into the stable, just so we'd have a better chance at him that way. Yes, sir. Well, it's me he's going to be after. I'll go out first. Uh, I'll cover you the best you can, Mr. Dillon. Now, look, he doesn't know which direction we're going to be taking, so I expect he'll be hiding pretty close to the stable. Mr. Dillon, you're risking your life just to keep me out of jail. I'm catching a murderer, Chester. No, sir, that's only part true. You're catching a murderer. I'm going to lead my horse out the main door now. You stay here in the shadows. And I'm going to turn back and call to you so that he'll know it's me that's out there. Well, ain't there some other way we can catch you, Mr. Dillon? I'd... 
I swear, I don't know what I'd do if anything happened. I'm going to go now. Yes, sir. Hurry up, Chester. Let's get moving. Stop it! He's in that alley, Mr. Dillon. I seen his gun flash. Don't shoot, Chester. Wait a minute. Come on. Look. Laying right there, Mr. Dillon. That's a woman. Yeah. right away. She tried to kill you, Mr. Dillon. No. No, it wasn't me. I followed Jake here. And I tried to stop him. Get on, Chester. Where is he, Nita? I couldn't stop him. He's a murderer. Where is he? Tell me. That rain barrel at the end of the alley. He said he was going to hide in there and for me to shut up. All right, you stay with her, Chester. Yes, she. I'm taking no chances, Bewley. I'm going to start blowing holes in that barrel. No. Don't you. Look. My hands. Can't you see them? All right, keep them up. Hi. All right, now stand up. I ain't going to try nothing, Marshal. I'll take your gun. Give it to me. All right, now climb out of there. Sure. I, I wasn't going to shoot nobody, Marshal. You made a big mistake, especially shooting a woman like Shut that. up. Stop walking. Sure. Jay? Shut up, Nita. I told you not to do it. I, I told you. Too bad you wasn't killed. She Jane. was the one tried to do it, Marshal, not me. But, but, I, I only run and hid to, to protect her, sort of. You're not making much sense, Bewley. Take him to jail, Chester. Yes. Listen to me, Marshal. No. Get going. Come on. Move, Bewley. Go on. And you better walk straight. <laughs> Won't do no good. You can't keep me in jail. You'll be saying that a month from now, Bewley. And you walk all right, Nita. Let me rest a minute. When I can. Yeah, sure. I guess you won't be coming to the wedding after all, will you, Marshal? No. No, Nita. I, I guess I won't. Here. I'll carry you up to Doc's. star, William Conrad. Thank you, George. Today, there's one filter cigarette that stands out from all the rest. L and M stands out for flavor, for effective filtration, for highest quality tobacco. L and M's got everything. That's what makes it America's best filter tip cigarette. Try L and M's king size or regular. I know you'll go for them. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Ray Kemper. 
Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, Lawrence Dobkin, James Nusser, and Joyce McCluskey. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Put a smile in your smoking. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember this. In the whole wide world, no cigarette satisfies like Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoking. Instantly, you'll smile your approval of Chesterfield's smoothness. You want them mild. We make them mild. Mild and mellow, with the smooth and refreshing taste of the right combination of the world's best tobaccos. Put a smile in your smoking. Try Chesterfield's today. Listen to Chesterfield's two great radio shows every week. The Perry Como Show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And Dragnet, Tuesday nights on another network. Remember, listen again next week for another transcribed story of the Western Frontier when Marshal Matt Dillon, Chester Proudfoot, Doc, and Kitty, together with all the other hard-living citizens of Dodge, will be with you once more. It's America growing west in the 1870s. It's drama... It's Gunsmoke, brought to you by L&M Filters. This is the CBS Radio Network.